Proudly we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor, bidding you welcome to a special edition of Proudly We Hail, presented each week by your War Department. Yes, this edition of Proudly We Hail is marked outstanding, for we present the most talked-about movie personality in Hollywood, that great star and great fellow, Clark Gable, in an original story by Tom Petty titled Repercussion, with music by Eddie Scrivanek. Duke O'Hara has fought his way across the tracks right up to the top of the heap. And tonight, he's ready for the payoff, his party's nomination for governor. Here he is, waiting for Mrs. O'Hara in his study. Hello? Hello, Duke. Yeah, Jim, what's on your mind? We're in a jam, fellow. The opposition's going to spring a scandal on us. Okay, if they want to play rough, I'm ready. Duke, I've got to talk to you. Save it, put it on ice. I'm throwing a party for the big boys, and you're invited. But no business. Just the announcement of my nomination. I can't tell you about this on the phone, Duke. It's too hot. Then send me a telegram and spell my name right. Bye. Jim Dare, the guy's as nervous as a hummingbird. And he's my campaign manager. Hey, Gilly, where are you? Uh, did you call, boss? Of course I called you. Where's that band I hired? Uh, they're here, boss. Well, where's Mrs. O'Hara? We've got to get this party started. Duke O'Hara, you don't have to shout. I'm right here. Oh, darling, you're as nervous as a cat. Me? Uh-huh. Nervous? Mm. Mm. All dressed up. What a pretty wife I've married. Pretty as a stick of peppermint candy. Get out, Gilly. I got everything I want right here. Everything you want, Duke. Well, most everything, baby. Everything except a little job down at the Capitol. Are you sure you want it, dear? As sure as Sunday, Nell. It's in my blood. I've done a lot of fighting and sweating to get inside of that job. I want the power that goes with it for myself and the social rigmarole for you. Being up there is something I've dreamed about since I was a kid. A kid from the wrong side of town. You're a strange person, Duke. Strange? What's so strange about wanting to be governor? I didn't mean that. It's just that you're so sure. Oh, never mind. Oh, but I do mind. They're handing me the job on a silver platter. Don't you want to be the governor's lady? I just want to be with you, Duke. Always. But sometimes I... Oh, I'm acting like a (laughs) schoolgirl. Who's nervous now? What's bothering you, baby? Oh, Duke, I love you so much. I never dreamed I'd find it difficult to tell you anything. Darling, I I believe I'm afraid of you. Afraid of me, Nell? Mm -hmm. Why, I've been scared to death of you ever since that morning you came into my office to interview me. I never have figured out how I got the courage to ask you to marry me. I just had to, or you would have spilled all my secrets in your newspapers. Now I'm trying to tell you my secret. And I don't know how to begin. Oh, so my girl's been holding out on me. Spill it, baby, and I'll have the guy hanged when I get to be governor. Oh, it isn't that kind of a secret, dear. There never has and never will be any other man for me. There better not be. Let's forget the yesterdays. And all the tomorrows, too. Yeah, but not about tonight, baby. Not about tonight. Come here. Oh, Duke. Hey, Duke, Duke! Say, what do you mean, crashing in here? You're a fine campaign manager, breaking up the first minute I've had alone with my wife in a week. But I told you I had to see you. Well, you meant please stop shouting. I'll be back, Duke. And don't be talking with Mr. Dare too long. Say, what's the matter with you anyhow, Jim? Can't you let me enjoy myself on the biggest night in my life? Duke, how long had you known Mrs. O'Hara before you married her? Oh, a couple weeks, I guess. Now, wait a minute. What's all this got to do with my record? It isn't your record that's causing trouble. It's hers. What? You... Hey, 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 Duke, hey, stop it, fella. Hey, Hey, what are you trying to tell me, mister? I'm trying to tell you that you can't accept that nomination tonight. You can't ever be governor. I don't know what the deal is, Jim, but I'm going to be governor of this state this year, and no living man is going to stop me. A woman is going to stop you. She's your wife. She's crossed you up, Duke. 
Jim, if I hadn't lived with you and fought with you and trusted you for years, I'd... I'd kill you. I'd rather die than do this to you, Duke, but she's got a prison record. I've seen it. So that's what she was trying to tell me a minute ago, hmm? That's what it was all about. All right, let's have it, straight and fast. Well, she did a stretch in the penitentiary, shoplifting and forgery. Judge Benedict sent her up, called herself Inez Agnew. You're lying, Jim. She was in there a couple of weeks when she escaped, but she's going to have to go back. It was a three-year stretch, Duke. They know where she is, huh? They know. I don't suppose there's ever been a governor whose wife was serving time in the pen. I'm sorry, Duke. Skip it. You've done your job, Jim. I'll take over from here on out. Beat it. I got to think. Our proudly we hail drama, Repercussion, starring Clark Gable, will continue immediately after this important message from your war department. You young men just out of high school, have you made up your mind? Have you decided on a job or on further education? The new regular army can give you both. That's right. You'll be able to continue your education while in the army. You can study technical and cultural subjects up through college level. And all the while, you'll receive full-time army pay for a full-time job. Talk it over with your army recruiting officer first thing tomorrow. And now, Act Two of Repercussion, starring Clark Gable as Duke O'Hara. The newfound knowledge of his wife's prison record, certain to bar him from the governor's chair, has put Duke in a tailspin. And the O'Hara households teeming with excitement as the guests begin to arrive. This is a lovely party, Mrs. O'Hara. Thank you. Uh, the boss wants to see you in his study, ma'am. Thank you, Gilly. My, it's stuffy in here. Duke. Duke, what's happened to you? You're as pale as death. I'm all right. Close the door. Oh, you poor darling. Duke, you know. Yes, I know. Oh, it just means that we can't be together for a little while. I'm going to be all right. Is that all it means to you? Oh, don't be so tragic, darling. It just means that I can't stay up late and that I can't leave the Grand March with you. I, I can't dance with you for a long time. The doctor said... The doctor? What doctor? Well, Dr. Stewart, of course. He said I'd be fine after a couple of months' rest. But he warned me not to dance. Said the exertion might bring on a heart attack. How long have you known this, Nell? Just this afternoon, when the reports came from the hospital. Well, doctors can be wrong. You don't look ill. Oh, I'm going to get well fast. I must if I'm going to be the governor's lady. Have you told anyone else about, about your condition? Of course not. I could hardly tell you. You're going to dance with me tonight. You're not ill. Not that sick. Duke, I can't. The doctor warned me. Well, you have to take a chance. It'll be the most important, the finest thing you ever did for me. Is, that Im is it that important to you, as important as my life? I'm going to be governor, Nell. And you're going to lead the march with me tonight if it's the last thing you ever do. Uh, turn me loose. You're hurting my arm. Please. More guests are arriving. We must meet them. Will you... Help me fasten my necklace, please. Yeah. Duke, Duke, you're choking me. Duke, what's happened to you? Have you seen Mr. O'Hara? Uh, he's right over there, Miss Neal. I'll get him for you. Thank you, Gilly. Ready for the grand march now? Duke, I'm going to have to go to my room. I feel faint. Nonsense. You're going to stay right here and dance with me. I've never seen you looking better, nor prettier, if I may say so. I don't understand you. You've changed. You're cruel. Maybe. Yes, Nell, I've changed. But why, Duke? Why? Don't you know? No, I don't know. Maybe it's ambition, wanting so desperately to be governor. I can understand that. I can understand everything, except this sudden hatred that you'd like to see me dead. Oh, no. No, Nell, don't say that. 
Oh, I must have been insane. I'm ready to dance with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I all know why we're here, so let's line up for the Grand March. You ready, Duke? Let it go, boys. Stop it. Stop the music. Well, this isn't on the program, but I've got something to say to all of you, and when I've finished, I hope you'll go on having fun. I've been a fool tonight. I put ambition ahead of love. Pride and ambition almost caused me to commit. But that's all over now. I want everyone in this state to know that my wife means more to me than pride or political ambition. She comes first. Mm -hmm. Now. Oh, she's fainted, Mrs. O'Hare. Get back. I'll take care of her. Gilly, telephone Dr. Stewart. Oh, darling, please don't leave me now. Uh, uh, oh. Everything went dark, Duke. I'm so ashamed. No, no, nothing matters now, baby. You're back with me. Go ahead with the party, Jim. I'm going to take Mrs. O'Hara to her room. There, there, baby. Everything's going to be okay. Oh, I feel all right now. I must have fainted from happiness. You do love me, don't you? Yes, Nell. You aren't ashamed of me. No, baby. I'll never be ashamed of you. I don't care if you do have to go back to jail. Go back to jail? What on earth are you talking about? You'll never have to pretend again. We'll face this together. Face what, Duke? I don't understand. That three-year prison sentence is waiting for you. Darling, that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard you say. Well, now, Nell, let's face it. Judge ben Benedict did send you up for shoplifting. You did escape. But, Duke, dear, that was a newspaper stunt. But, darling, how long have you been thinking of me as a shoplifter, an escaped convict? Jim told me about it just before the party. Well, I'll tell you more about it. My paper got Judge Benedict to sentence me under an assumed name so that I could be in a cell with one of our most notorious women thieves. I found out all about the entire gang. Well, then all you did was to aid in a public service. Yes, darling. Oh, <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. When they spring their big scandal, we'll laugh them right out of the state. And I'll laugh the loudest. Now, give me a kiss and get back downstairs to our guests. I'll be waiting for you, darling. <laughs> okay, baby. I'm going down and tell them you've just elected me governor. So ends our proudly we hail drama, Repercussion. Now, these important and timely words from Wendell Niles. Young men, the career of the future is in the air, and you can choose your specialty in the Army Air Forces. That's right, men. You can pick your school before you enlist. You don't sign the enlistment papers until you've been accepted for the school of your choice. And don't forget, you receive that high Army pay right from the day you enlist. Don't wait. Ask now about the aviation career plan at your local Army recruiting station. And now, here is our producer, Mr. C.P. McGregor. We're most grateful to Clark Gable for a splendid performance, a performance which provided this special edition of Proudly We Hail. Mr. Gable appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which provides for the appearances of all radio and motion picture stars on this program. Don't forget to listen to Proudly We Hail each week at its regular time on this station when we will present such outstanding stars as Van Johnson, Fred McMurray, Brian Donlevy, Marie McDonald, and the best in Hollywood. And now, until the next program at the regular time, this is C.P. McGregor saying cheerio from Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs>